Oh, here comes a sick one. Welcome to another episode of The Hold Down. I'm your host, Ronnie Blakey. My co-host is a surf journalist with 25 years in the game. He also has the record for the lowest ever combined heat score in a pro <laughs> junior event here in Osborne. Blakey, how are you? <laughs> Thanks, Doggy. Good to be here. And I'd just like to give a shout out to Dave Nielsen, who lent me a board with no fin screwed in it for that heat. So thank you, Dave. Another big show for you today, folks. We're going to be having a look at one of the finest, one of the greats, a legend, an icon, Mark Ocalupo. This is your life. This Mate. is going to be a lot of fun. Oh, man. Oki is the man. Because while some pro surfers seem like they're on another level in terms of, you know, being put up on a bit of a pedestal, I feel like everyone thought that Oki was their mate. Everyone could just relate to him. He was lovable, he was kind of goofy, he was just a full-blown, unbridled, natural talent who had this crazy journey through life. But more than anything, Oki just stoked people out with his surfing, with his personality. We love the guy. And we've been getting so much of him because he has been a major surf star since his early teens. He burst onto the scene. I think his first photo was run when he was 12 years old on an old GNS in Trax magazine. And from that day forward, he never left our sights or hearts because everything he did just came with this natural ability. He was able to win the biggest junior contest in the world when he was just a grommet. More Rocky, give it to us. Give me more now. The Raging Bull. Let's break down the big moments in the life of Oki, starting with our number five. Five! Pipe master Oki breaks through as a teenager to claim one of surfing's top honours. Mate, the Pipe Masters, as we've said on this show before, it's the pinnacle, it's the zenith, it's Wimbledon, it's, you know, the biggest thing you can possibly do in your surf career is win a Pipeline Masters. Oki, in his first ever Pipe Masters at 18 years old, Ron, came second. He went over there. The surf wasn't crazy, perfect pipe, but he got the result. The next year he turns up though, it's serious. It is huge, gnarly, scary pipeline. And Oki goes into a field with absolute masters of the pipe. Jerry Lopez is still surfing in the event. Simon Anderson's in the event. Tom Carroll's in the event. Joey Buran, a pipe master. All these legends of pipe. Rabbit, oh my goodness, rabbit. The guy who busts down the door over there by, you know, really taking a brand new backside attack. So all of these guys, and in the mix, this young, blonde-haired, goofy footer from Cronulla, he would have been long odds to get the win at Pipeline this day because it was massive. His fear almost kind of kept him in a good spot in the lineup, didn't it? Because while the, uh, the, the big dogs went looking for those big second reefers and roll-ins, the biggest waves of the day, oh, it felt like was unaware and sort of sat inside, not wanting to get in the path of the big ones. But you know what, at Pipe on those big days, it's the ones that actually get past Second Reef and Jack up on the inside that are often the heaviest. Well, if you've seen the footage from the documentary, you see Gordon Merchant actually on the beach telling Oki, just get the ones in between because guess what? Six waves counted in your final heat score. That is absurd. Imagine just trying to get six waves in a heat with six other guys out, especially at Pipeline. But you're right, Ron. He just had his tactics. He snuck in and out. Don't forget, Pipeline, when it's this big, uh, it wasn't the cleanest day either. For the, for the big day, the final day of the event, it was warping, it was twisting, There was the wind was a little funky. And as you said, the guys who really wanted to go out there and get the Mac Daddy sets, they were putting themselves in some awful positions. Oki was darting in and out, but he still copped one insanely heavy wipeout that actually gave him tinnitus for the rest of his life. Slapped his head on the wave, bursted his eardrum. That was early in the day, so he surfed in a lot of discomfort all the way through the final. Pipeline, you know, I spoke to uh, Mick Fanning about this recently says he's never really felt comfortable out there. He's never really paddled out and just gone, I'm in sync with this wave. Oki just seemed to have it from the very first time he surfed it. If you look at some of the photos from this event, there's waves where he's just standing, bolt upright, painting the ceiling, you know, just having fun, voguing out at this wave. Well, it's uh, fun looking back. That was definitely one of the big moments in Ox's career, but there has been so many more. And when we return from the break, we're gonna have a look at what's sitting at number four. Oh, 
Oh, here comes a sick one. Welcome back to the Hold Down, Ronnie and Vaughan breaking down the life and times of Mark Ocalupo, aka the Raging Bull, aka the Oc. And this is going to be a lot of fun. Let's dive straight in, Vaughan. Let's rep into it. This is our number four. The Occumentary. Has there ever been a better signature film in the sport? Probably not, and there's a massive reason for that. A, Oki's life as a, just a giant parcel of highs and lows is one of the great surfing stories. So, I mean, you can't go wrong. But when you put together one of the greatest filmmakers of all time with one of the greatest surfers of all time in a collaborative partnership that had yielded so many epic moments for so many years, you just couldn't, you couldn't stuff it up. And I mean, Jack McCoy had the knowledge, he had the heart, he's such a, you know, a, a tender filmmaker and his friendship with Oki really was wonderfully showcased throughout this wonderful film that really has had so much effect on so many people. We all got to live Oki's highs and lows but in a way that you know, really captured the magic of the man as well. Yeah, well, uh, Jack really had the keys to the archives, didn't he? Because he shot the majority of Ox's uh, earlier days, his, his younger career moving on through. So he was there for all those moments, but he was also there as a friend when Ocky fell on hard times and he was really supportive, still wanted to get that classic footage of Ock and, and the vision that came out of the documentary uh, was just next level and the soundtrack to boot. Oh mate, the Fooies, the good old Foo Fighters. You know, hearing that song Hero with that footage of Oki, I mean, you've got a heart made out of cold black tar if you don't start tearing up when you see that. You know, these two guys, I think some of the sessions that just stand out for me when I think about, you know, what they've given surfing, there's the desert sessions with Oki in uh, Green Iguana and Bunyip Dreaming. There's the stuff up north, there's uh, Hawaiian sessions with uh, in excess blaring, which is just gets your blood boiling because it's just so good to watch. And of course, the big one, Oki's left. We still don't know where it is, Jack. We don't know where it is, Ock. Tell us where it is. You know, those sorts of sessions, I know that you and I spent almost our entire childhood wearing out the tape on those videotapes back in the old school days, just watching them over and over and over again. Iconic. But the documentary is actually the best of all of that put together. And, you know, in a life that has so many highs and lows, to see it all in one beautiful parcel, treated with absolute heart and care, was just something that, you know, even your mum could enjoy if she didn't surf, which our mum didn't, but I know she enjoyed it. On you, mum. <laughs> and on you, Jack, and good on you, Ock. That was uh, one of the great surf flicks for sure. But. There has been another that Oki took part in, oh, and it was yes. a Hollywood special. This is our number three. Three! The North Shore coming in at number three. How could it not? It was definitely my favourite Hollywood movie when I was a kid. No. It still is. Without doubt. It's a cult classic. It has everything that you want. It's got the, uh, the kook from the desert in Arizona winning in a wave pool. Oh, Rick Kane, you're blowing. <laughs> he gets to Hawaii. He thinks he ribs, he gets schooled, he gets picked up by Oki and Pagey, his name is Alex in the film. And, uh, Oc, you know, it was the role he was born to play himself. The thing about North Shore is just that it really showcases that Oc was up for anything. He, he made it known very early that he wanted to be a singer, he wanted to be an actor, he wanted to have a life outside of surfing because he just loved everything. He was such a passionate guy. And, you know, over the years we've had so many epic moments as surfers getting to see Oki bring our world to the mainstream. Appearing on uh, Hey Hey It's Saturday with Daryl Summers and Ozzy Ostridge, that's got to be one of the all-time interviews. Then you see him on Dancing with the Stars in more recent years with his, his muscle vest on just looking cut as stone, hey? Everything he turns his hand at just seems to have that little bit of magic. For me, there's nothing better than the interview with uh, Tom Curran, I think, with Steve Liebman on the, uh, in the car park at Bells. Hi there, Graham. Hi, Graham. Good to talk to you. Yeah. Uh, Tom, first, let me talk to you. Can I just ask you, what are the conditions like out uh, there? They were chundrous it's yesterday and... Uh, one well... perfect day down here today, though. It's dropped off a bit and the wind's gone offshore and it looks really neat. It's not as monstrous as yesterday, but... It's, it looks really clean. You know, when every branch is away from surfing, it's an episode in absolute comedy and it is so fun to watch. I reckon it's time that someone made a, a movie on Oc. I know it's been talked about before, 
How do you reckon we'd play Oki in that movie? It'd be hard not to get him to play himself. It would, who could do it? I mean, I don't know who has the acting chops to pull off an Oki other than Oki himself. He did it so well the first time around. Let's get him back on there. Send him to Hollywood. We love it. OK, that was uh, Oki in the North Shore. There's still a couple of very big moments coming your way in the life of this great man. Stay with us. You're watching The Hold Down. <laughs>
everyone loves the Ock. So true. Everyone feels like Ocky is their mate, like I said at the start of the show. And uh, to see him get there and win in, uh, you know, after a decade of Slater domination. So, you know, new school versus old school was huge. The momentum generation had changed everything. They put a real sour taste on the, the old guard. They couldn't quite believe that surfing was being rewarded the way that Kelly was doing it, the boards he was on. And then Oki won the world title. And by the time you see guys like Andy Irons coming on the scene, you can see the mix of power and new school. And so you serve the Kelly influence and then you have the Oki influence later on for those guys. And I think the rawness of Oki has always been in the guys that you just think, how does that guy surf so good? The Dane Reynolds, the Andy Irons, and uh, more recently the Noah Deans and these sorts of characters. Guys who just seem to have it oozing out of their pores. That's what Oki brings. Just such a unique physique as well. Just made oh, for that power surfing. So and low. One of the big things was, uh, I think, in the, the lead up to that, that comeback, you know, Oki was sort of starting to ask people, uh, you know, what have I got to do to catch up? And they were just going, speed, mate, you need speed. Oh. And he found that on those magic Rod Dahlberg shapes. Oh, man. And, um, and he, he actually evolved his surfing and really started to bring some of that, that, that new school flair. I totally agree. I think that's one of my favourite you know, stories of the whole Oki comeback was when Barton Lynch said to him, you've got to be faster, mate. And Oki's power with that, ex you know, the extra speed and the magic sleds, those Dahlbergs, if you pick one up right now, I guarantee you any surfer can pick up one of those boards and just feel it fizzing under their arm. It's like, oh, this is going to be a magic board. And Oki just brought it all together. And man, oh man, that world title comeback is regarded in any sport in the world as one of the best because he really did come from total darkness back into the light to the absolute pinnacle of the sport. Good on you, Ock. Go, Ocky! What a worthy number two, but we still have one more big moment to unveil. Stay with us, you're watching The Hold Down. Oh, here comes a sick one. Welcome back to The Hold Down. Ronnie here with Vaughan and we've been running through Oki's incredible career. We just spoke about his world title victory, the amazing 99 comeback win, but it wasn't number one. What? Let's find out what is. This is number one. It could only be the 1997 Super Skins event at Pumpin' Bells Beach. Mark Ocalupo, well into his comeback. He'd finished second in the Pipe Masters the year before. He was ready to go. He wanted it. He was back. He'd surf Bells. But then, out of nowhere, this specialty event turns up where you win five grand per heat. Man on man, you had to nominate your wave at the end. You could catch two or three waves, I think. You had to nominate one. Oki went on a tear. Unbelievable surfing, but uh, it was also the big reminder that the guy was one of the greatest surfers and he'd been basically living his life on the lounge watching daytime TV and then all of a sudden he's out there at Bells on those big tall walls throwing down some of the most outrageous backhand surfing we'd ever seen. Well, Oki's story is one thing, but Oki's surfing, that's where it all comes from. That's where the love comes from, that's where the admiration comes from. This is the pinnacle of Oki's backhand surfing. Everyone loves Oki's backhand. This was in a new realm. We talked about the Magic Dahlbergs. He had one this day. It was like a Formula One race car and Oki's backhand at Bells Beach is a sight to behold, I tell you. He was doing stuff that day where he was just surfing on whitewash like it was green open face. Carving off the bottom, vertical up, snapping off whitewash, like literally bubbles of air and going absolutely ballistic. He won 11 heats in a row at five grand a heat. $55,000. What about that? Come on, and, and the car. Oh, and the car. It was pump and run. I mean, you had everyone in it. Kelly Slater, Wilsey, Powley, all the boys who were at the top of their game at that time. And Oki just wiped them. Absolutely wiped them. And, and I think there was like a, a big change up in, in just the, the performance. On the tour at that time, you know, there was obviously incredible surfers, uh, but what Ock brought, just that, that mix of flair with that power on the back end, it just really did set up his massive return to, to competition and, and, as you said, a healthy bonus in the bank account as well. Oh, man. The, the thing that I always trip out on when I watch this surfing is, A, 
It's completely timeless. This surfing will live forever. It will be regarded as some of the best backhand surfing of all time, if it's not still right there at the top. The other thing that blows me out is Oki just doesn't even look mentally there. It's like he's gone into another realm. It's like his body is just 100% reacting purely to whatever the wave is throwing at him. And I don't know how many people can actually surf like that. I, I think there's only a handful and Oki is 100% emotional. I think we all tap into the emotion of the guy, you know, whatever he's feeling, we feel. And that's been a big part of like, you know, our connection to him over the years. But that, sort of attitude on a wave is just magic to watch and to me this will always be one of the great surf sessions in history and I can watch that footage over and over and over and over and over and over and over again because there will only ever be one Oki and this is him at his best. Yeah Rocky, we love you buddy, go the Ock! Yeah Rock, unfortunately that's all we've got time for on today's show but tune in again next week as we run through more big moments in the sport of surfing here on The Hold Downs.